so we're gonna all go in and see what we can find. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Well, through the drippy windshield, you can see we are approaching River Bluff Antiques. This is a country antique store by someone's old house out by the river on Old Highway 41 north of Princeton. Well, let's clear the windshield so you can see. There we go. So this is an owner-occupied shop and sometimes those are great because you get to meet the person in person and they can make all the pricing decisions and they're often willing to deal with dealers and resellers because they know that you've got to make money too and they don't have to call someone, some vendor and find out whether it's okay to give a discount or not. This one got good reviews and they said that they've got a lot of depth of certain types of things, like there's a lot of collections of things. So we're gonna all go in and see what we can find. It's so much fun shopping with these guys. We're just having the best time. This is definitely an old school antique place. Lots of big old wood furniture, great old showcases. Bunch of Christmas stuff right up front. Lots of really good Crocs. So we will take a look and see what we can find. See if there's any reseller bargains in here. He said he's willing to dicker, so we'll probably put him to the test. Very pretty colors in this stained glass window here. This is the first coverlet I've seen in a while, and it's a rather basic design in the deep blue, but I like it. It's priced at $249. We see a bunch of the old high button shoes priced in the $70 range, which is about right, but these are a cute pair. The 20s or 30s looking at the style, I'm guessing more 30s, priced at $28. This pair is a little different style, more of a riding boot, but yes, women mainly wore boots back then because streets were not paved, there was lots of mud. There were horses everywhere. Horses leave things you don't want to trot in in low shoes. So that's why you see these high button shoes because, well, it's what you needed back then. Yeah. And look at these cute Gibson Girl era prints. $12 each, not bad. We've got some silhouettes here. Jeffrey got some great deals on silhouettes at the other place we were. These aren't too bad for 10 a piece with the foil backing. Some people don't prize these as much as they do with the printed backing, but I frankly like them and they sell pretty well for me too. And this man, is he smoking? I guess that's what's coming out of his fingertip is smoke. In this one she's made him put down his cigarette and help her. That's pretty good considering these were done about 1940 and the idea of men helping women with housework was not necessarily a universally shared idea. And then strangely enough, the bigger ones are priced more cheaply. And these have that nice bowed glass, but it may be because they reacted a little bit. Up at the top sometimes where they would clip things in, they sometimes turn color. This one seems fine though. And if you would go 15, I'd probably take that one because it is larger and you don't see the larger ones nearly as often as you see the small sizes. This one's got a little bit of damage in the background. You do have to look carefully at these things. Nice cover on the Oz books. Those are some nice older ones. The Road to Oz, The Land of Oz, and Dorothy and the Wizard. A ton of blue bowls by Ull with the picket fence design. And then a ton of spice tins. Spice tins are another area that are really fun to collect. Some of these can be rather valuable depending. Depends on age and design. They're gonna want tin more than they want cardboard. 
these Kroger ones from the 60s are not going to be as expensive as, say, this one with the Sudanese figure. Tons of miniature oil lamps. Here's one of those very sweet Vienna art plates that I always like. Look how pretty she is. Got a little bit of a white sheen to it. That may or may not come up. I've had people tell me if you slice a raw potato and rub it on, sometimes that will work. It's $39. That seems reasonable for what it is. If it had advertising on the back, it would be more. There you go. If you don't have a bathroom, well, now you do. He has a lot of Coca-Cola trays and this very interesting Please Pay When Served, which looks like it's Sirocco wood. It is priced at $7.95. I do believe it's a very hard one to get. Princeton Farms white popcorn, that's going to be more valuable here than anywhere because this is where it's from. Lots of neat tobacco tins. The Ool water cooler is a more unusual piece too, and it's old. It's got the brass spigot. Here is a rather good variety of old apothecary jars and bottles. Priced anywhere from about 29 to 49. There was a period where these were selling for bigger money than that, but it does seem like a lot of people who like these have gotten them and they're back down in these price ranges that we're seeing here. Barb is excited because she's finding rubber face Santas right away. And they're priced in about the $30 range, and he said he'll work with us, so this is pretty cool. In fact, she's got a really good one right there. Look at that face. That is so cool. Who made that one? Um, Rushton. That's a Rushton also? Yeah, this is a Rushton and that one. And then this one is not. I'm not sure. Can you tell by the boots it. if they're not marked, or are they always marked? I just, I know what Russians look like. You in just the know face. from the face, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's how it gets when you they collect something. Oh, and they do have a good mark on them. Cool. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. are great. And the prices seem good. Yeah. It's a good deal for the money. This is an old crimper. This would have been for doing the crimping of sleeves. It is priced at 69 and the last one of these I sold for over 100 so I think I'm going to get this. I believe he'll discount it enough to make it worthwhile. I'll have to make sure that it actually meets up and turns when you lower the rod there. This is Vincennes, Indiana one of the oldest cities west of the Appalachians. Gee, I wonder what they sell here. This is out on the edge of Vincennes. It says visitor information here. You'll note the fleur-de-lis because Vincennes originally was part of Quebec. This was the farthest outpost. It was settled in 1732 and it was a big place for the French buffalo hide and fur traders to gather. It was also a very important place during the Revolutionary War. George Rogers Clark and his band got together and were able to dispatch the English who had taken over the town. And they did it by attacking in the middle of February when nobody thought they would do it. And look who's here, Mary Beth and Laura. And here we are inside Shaker's Landing and this is a neat store. The store definitely has cool stuff, and I like the fact that they have taken this rather simple metal building and managed to make this really fun group of displays that have a real rustic feel. She sure has a neat design to her. The dancer, Art Deco. It's all one piece, though. That's and it's lightweight, so it is something that looks like it's probably Italian and a revival piece rather than original to the era. This is really cool. This is 1876 Centennial fan. This would have been given out probably for some parade around the 4th of July. It was just paper. The fact that any of them have survived is pretty amazing. 
and it's priced at 89. This is officially part of the Manhattan glass line by Anchor Hawking from the 30s. The ashtray was the one thing they did as advertising. Any company could have their information screen painted on the bottom. Wings that turn into, well, something else. This is a great old hood ornament though. It's pretty pitted. It's $40. If she was in good shape, she'd certainly be worth about a hundred because she's winged and she is kind of a nude as well. Please folks, don't stick tags to paper or wood or put them over part of a print so that the rest of it fades around it. Bad, bad, bad. It's liquid and you're pouring it over the, uh -huh. the paper, but it comes right off. Oh, that's great. So it's called undo. undo. And had they I'm not sorry, already <laughs> ripped this, I would have been able to save it. That's unfortunate because it's a great price for $20, 1950s gum display. We all liked it, but it's wrecked. Well, we are on Old Highway 41, which was the Chicago to Miami route. And here is an old U.S. highway sign for Route 41. That's a neat thing. Not reflective, hand-painted. It's in pretty good shape, but it's not for sale. I hate it when they do that. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. Gee, Rocky. Poor Bullwinkle. It's terrible when you get canceled. Look at the big old Mack truck grill. That is cool. It's going to be a 1940s, maybe earlier 30s even. Mary Warlie has to be one of the worst product names I've ever heard of, but apparently hogs just love it. Oh, cool. So Mark's showing us that this is a mouse hole forge because it's marked as such from England, and he's got one. And look at the little mouse on there. That's really neat. I've sold vandals before. I don't know that I've ever seen any so well marked. Yeah, and some of them. Some of them actually had markings on this um, right, right hand side. Very cool. It's made in the 1820s or 30s. That is neat. So there's mark, they're marked 1, 2, and 10. And what does that tell us? That's British weight. And then 2 is stone, which is 14 yeah. pounds? Something like that. And then they go down to And then 10 individual. pounds individual. That's unique to the way that they produce. Yeah, um, most of them don't have holes in there. And that's, that's, that's why they call them. And that's the mouse hole. And hence the name. Fantastic, thank you, that is great. I knew anvils were very popular and I've sold them, but I've never had one marked and I did not know to look for those things. That is really good information. That one's really good shape. This is interesting because it's the old Heineken beer Dutch boy, but he's got the bottle. So it's both pieces that you need. That might be worth getting. Laura and Mary Beth are having a lot of fun with uranium glass in this space. We just took a big load up for them. I'm going to look next door. I see some Van Briggle. And these are only $19 a piece. Now, they're not terribly uncommon, but it's a really great shape. And it seems to me that that should be a $35 or $40 item. There's probably some room in there for resellers. Samson Import, that would be Japanese from the 50s. It's a wall pocket. She's cute. I haven't been showing a lot of furniture, but I thought I should show this piece because it's an old secretary desk with a cylinder top, which is a little different. This is very nice girl. And if you open this, it should roll right up and you've got all the drawers and fittings inside. This is a handsome piece. And pretty practical, although it does take some footprint. This one's priced at $1,400. There's a little cluster of string holders from the days before shipping tape was easily available. Can you imagine if all of us resellers had to tie string around all these packages that we're sending these days? The string holders are really cool, though, and they are still functional. 
This is a nice older ship's model. You can tell it has age because of the patina. Lots of detail. More coverlets here. Now this one seems to be priced a lot less than the other one. I see 129 on the one down there. This one, which is again blue, 295. So they seem to run the gamut as far as prices. I don't think any of them are in a range that I can really get close to though. But I like these. They were done in the 1860s and 70s originally. 195, but that one is as is. Eleven dollars. I probably do something with that. It is void. Here's an interesting way to use an old convex frame. They put a lot of miniature plates in it, and because it's convex, they will fit in there without falling off or being too tight. And then this has slag glass at the top. This is a very nice Gothic style mirror. I don't know whether this was just a wall mirror or if it used to have a piece of furniture that it went to, but it looks like it was just made for the wall because it doesn't look like it would have sat on anything. That is very pretty. Walnut frame. And unfortunately, oh, $200. And they're calling it a church mirror. Very pretty. Well, I'll pay for this and I'll go look at it. $44. Some nice colors in that bowl. The old transferware platter here is a Royal Dalton. And it's the Gleaners. Old English scenes. I did not really think of the Gleaners as being an old English scene, but this version of them is. This cathedral geode for 270 is actually a pretty good deal. It's pale. Some people prefer the darker purple, but for 270, considering that this one is 285 and much smaller, I think that's a pretty nice price. And this is a nice blown green decanter. Boy, the Pontel is sloppy like Blanco, and there was one period where they did clear stoppers. I'm used to seeing the stoppers in the same color. In any event, it almost doesn't really matter because for $38 for a nice blown decanter from the early 70s, that's a buy. And that, my friends, was another good example of look for the thing that doesn't belong in the space. It's a bunch of geodes and minerals and old antique advertising, and there is a green decanter in the middle of it. We think of King Cutter and some of those as being the tools to have, but this one is a true temper, but it's Mark Kelly Works and it's got the Black Raven on it. That makes it a rather scarce axe and they have a big price on it, but it is a hard one to find. There were very few axe heads that were decorated in this manner. And here is a genuine Nazi helmet. This is World War II confiscation, hard to find. The 1970s were not necessarily a time of high style and great tact. I'm not sure why this guy is dropped his drawers on the pier to catch the fish, but there he is, and he's seven dollars. Smut sells. Here's a neat old railroad map that would have been in an office. It's imploring you to ship by rail, as it shows down here. It looks like it's printed on some sort of paper or canvas that is starting to have some splits. But it shows the entire route. This is priced at almost a thousand dollars, but to find this size is really unusual. Should date to probably the 1920s. Here's a hat for you. It's a daisy with something else going on. Made in California, so it was high style, but sold in Evansville, Indiana. And yes, I have to put it on and see. It's lovely. <laughs> Let's turn that around so you can see it better. These are fun. These little bowls, they look like something that would have been part of a child's doll set, but they were actually salesman samples 
It used to be in the little towns that someone would go around with a wagon or a push cart and bring little miniature samples of everything around and then people would order them and that way they would ship in just what they needed because shipping was expensive and hard to do back then. So that's how business was done. I helped a client sell for several thousand dollars an original oil painting done by this artist that did this cat print. And they love to show the cats being very naughty in the boudoir. They're playing with things, they're ripping things apart, they're looking at themselves in the mirror, and of course, drinking cold cream. Ugh. Can you demonstrate that again? That was so clever, and I never thought of it. If you have a single, single candlestick, flip it upside down, and it's a riser. It's a pedestal. That is so cool. What so a great like idea. A, a uranium glass cup or yeah, a sugar can... jar or something else if you have it in your uranium glass collection. That is but... awesome. What a clever idea and what a great way. Oh, there you go. Mark's showing it so it glows. What a great way to use a single candlestick. That yeah. is so clever. I've still never have thought purpose. of that. This well, was like really little, nice too because it's... Like a little it's... cupcake holder. Yes, well, exactly. Like a, like a cake stand for a cupcake. I've had people buy these for like a first birthday, like a Aww. smash. That would be so this cool. Pretty, has the a smash. Like the babies for their first birthday, they pick it up and they smash it in their face. Oh yeah, that is such but a horrible like a thing picture. to do to baby. <laughs> Some more gas inserts, super boron upside down here, and then we've got regular, and I bet underneath is premium. But I've already got the premium, and regular doesn't sound as exciting as premium, so I think I'll leave those. Here's some old railroad date nails. These were to hold the ties down. Flight fuel, that's from an old Phillips 66 station. And we have ethyl over here. And then down here, this is a neat piece. Ask for Big D Drury's beer, and you've got the Canadian Mountie on the bottom there in his regalia. This bar mirror is going to date to about the 1950s, and it is $90. All this old advertising has really become so popular now. Well, the gang's all here, and we are having so much fun but I'm running out of battery and we're running out of shop because there's the checkout, which is where we're headed next. So for now, I'm just gonna say thank you so much for joining. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't because then you can click the thumbs up to be notified about future videos. Please check me out on the other social media you see listed below and let us know in the comments what you would like to see in the future. We are always open to suggestions as we travel around the world of antiques and vintage. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm George the Antique Nomad. Take care now. Bye-bye.